Hello everybody, what's up, and welcome to the channel where we learn to be true heroes in the world of Overwatch. Today I have another little chat video where we just sort of talk about an aspect of the game, and I got a couple requests in the comments to talk about the matchmaking system. How does it work exactly? Now, I don't want to sound overly cocky or trash on other content creators or anything like that, but there has been a lot of misinformation going around about this topic from being propagated by YouTube, Reddit, the forums, just a lot of people just saying stuff that's wrong and it's causing a lot of frustration in the community because people don't understand why their MR, their skill rating is doing what it's doing. So hopefully this video will dispel the myths and really once and for all paint a completely accurate picture of what's going on. So let's get right into it. Everybody's goal should probably be somewhere around here, Grandmaster. And the easy answer to how to get there is to just play better. And that's what the rest of my channel is dedicated to try to help you with. But what are the technical implications? Like how do you literally, how does the system work to literally give you points to eventually get you to good old big GM? Well, we're going to start at the very beginning. And this is where everybody in the game started, even though for many of you, it was a little while ago. And that is in quick play. When you first make a brand new account, you're level one, and you have to play uh, quick play up to level 25, because you can't play competitive until you're level 25. Now, everybody who makes a new Overwatch account is assigned some random starting MMR value. Let's call it 5,000. It, uh, it doesn't really matter, but this is different from your skill rating. That's why I'm making it such a different number. Let's say 5,000 is gonna be your hidden MMR when you first start playing the game. And this is, of course, your quick play MMR because quick play does have its own matchmaking system. Now, maybe your first five to 10 matches when you first make an account have sort of accelerated MMR gains. But in general, after that, when you win, your MMR goes up. And when you lose, your MMR goes down. Pretty simple. And we'll get a little bit more in depth on how this MMR number goes up or down when we get into actually playing ranked. So you play some games, you're having a grand old time playing the wonderful game of Overwatch, and eventually we hit level 25. Now we jump straight into ranked. We have our quick play MMR that we have been building or losing over the course of our 25 levels of quick play. And let's say we're a new player, so we crashed it down to like 3,000. Remember, this is hidden MMR which uses probably a different scale than your regular MMR. And I'm using a different scale intentionally just to show the difference. So this quick play MMR is used as your starting seed to determine your competitive play MMR when you start your placement. So it probably goes through some sort of modifier. Maybe this gets modified to like 2732 or something. Remember, your hidden MMR. Now we play our 10 placement matches, and these are played against players with similar MMR to the MMR we extrapolated, or Blizzard extrapolated from your quick play games. In these games, your personal performance does matter. Just like in Dota 2, for example. If you play, if let's say that you normally would get 50 MMR for a win, if you played really, really well, then you might be bumped up to like 70 MMR, or more, who knows. If you played kinda, Poorly though, it will negatively modify your MMR and you'll only gain, let's say, 30. But you'll still gain for a win always and you'll still lose for a lose always in your placement matches specifically. So now this player plays through all of his placement matches and again, he's sort of a new player. So he wound up losing MMR in the long run and he went from his original 27 something we said and now maybe he's at 2300. MMR, not skill rating, remember. Now this 2300 MMR, depending on the distribution of the rest of the players in the system, crunch some statistics, will equate to a SR, a skill rating that you actually see. And let's say that this is like, I don't know, 1700 skill rating, which is pretty reasonable for a new player. So 2300 MMR equates to approximately 1700 skill rating again the mmr numbers for blizzard are hidden so this is a completely hypothetical value but it doesn't matter it could be x it's just anything now here's the kicker and this is kind of what was frustrating a lot of people in the beginning of the season it seems like blizzard system has a tendency to place you even though let's say you have 2300 mmr which equates to 1700 skill rating it will actually place you maybe to encourage you make you feel a little better it'll place you somewhere like 18 to 1900 skill rating. So it actually places you above your MMR value and I think this is just to make it seem like you did better to encourage you to sort of play more, I guess. So let's say Blizzard's system places us at 1900 
skill rating. Just to make us feel a little bit better, maybe we'll have a little bit more pep in our step because we're like, whoa, we're at 1900, which is a lot better than where we should be at 1700. Now, your skill rating, it's just to make you feel a little bit better. Skill rating intentionally moves slower than MMR because it's sort of a buffer. Now, let's say you lose a ton of games in a row. Now, just to use an extreme example, let's say we're somewhere in Masters, we're at 3600, and we just just, I don't know, we have the worst day or week of our lives, we lose a billion games in a row, and our MMR crashes to the equivalent of about 2,000 skill rating, which is, you know, whatever the equivalent MMR X. So even though now your MMR is at a place where you should be at 2,000 skill rating, that would seem really bad, maybe you would quit forever. So it's not going to do that. Even though your MMR crashed that fast, your skill rating will lag behind. And maybe it will display to you that you are 2,500 skill rating. So now it looks like you're a lot higher than you really in actuality are. This is probably meant to encourage you to make you feel like, oh, it wasn't that bad. It basically makes lost streaks seem not as bad. But really behind the curtain, you still are 21 hundred equivalent skill rating in MMR points. Because of this, you will lose more for a loss and gain less for a win because your true skill rating will always eventually match up with your MMR. So if you if your MMR says you should be at 2000 skill rating and you are at 2100 skill rating, if you go 50/50 for a long enough time, your skill rating will eventually go down to 2000 to match up with what your MMR says it should be. But there is a happy side to this equation. If you are on a big win streak, your again, your skill rating will not go as fast as your MMR. So maybe your MMR says you should be at 3,800 skill rating, but your skill rating is only at 3,600 because you went on a huge winning streak. Now, if you go 50-50, you will eventually tend towards that 3,800 skill rating. So you'll actually gain more than you lose. So now that we've gotten that out of the way, that is why a lot of times, particularly after placements, people will lose more than they gain because their skill rating has not caught up. It just requires playing more games to have your skill rating catch up with your what your MMR thinks it should be. All right, so we play a lot of games to the point where our skill rating has matched up with our MMR, and maybe we've even improved. So this player is now at 2100 skill rating, and this is equal to what his MMR says his skill rating should be. Now, at this point, his performance does not affect his games. Every time Blizzard comes out and talks about performance affecting games, they always, 100% of the time, refer to placement matches, not actual games, and no one has actually been able to find any evidence of skill performance impacting a game at all. It's completely random. You can AFK for the entire game, avoiding detection, do zero damage, zero healing, zero everything, and get full MMR. Instead, there is a base amount of MMR that you gain for winning a match or losing a match. Let's call it 50. So if you win a match, you go plus 50. And if you lose a match, you go minus 50. Pretty simple. Now, there is an average MMR for the game. So if you are a silver player playing with a bunch of golds, then clearly your MMR is lower than the average. And maybe if you're a grandmaster player playing with a bunch of diamonds, then your MMR is obviously higher than the average. So if your MMR is higher than the average, you don't gain as much. So maybe instead of 50, you'll get 40 or 30 or something like that. But if your MMR is below the average, that means you're playing with players who are supposed to be better than you and you win, then you'll get a positive modifier. You might get 60 MMR or 70 MMR. Again, same idea. Because of this, if you are, let's say, a diamond player and you find yourself in the game that's like, and I'm sure you've done this before, that's like 10 masters, maybe a top 500, everyone looks way better than you, the MMR average is way higher, you should try really, really hard to win that game because you have a lot of potential gain. But be careful now, if it's like other MMR systems, if you get too far lower, like if you are 1200 MMR below the average, it might start to actually penalize you at that point. A lot of MMR systems work like that because it just assumes that you're too low that you can't have any reasonable impact on the game. But that's just speculation. The rest of the stuff I'm saying is 100% fact though. Now this is pretty well known, but if you are on a win streak, which seems to ramp up 
after about three wins up to five wins, you get a huge boost to your MR up to probably the maximum that you can gain. And uh, so if you're if you're on a win streak, if you've won like five in a row, you'll start to get a massive amount of MMR and skill rating. And if you're on a loss streak, the same thing, of course. The final thing to note is that your if you played in season one, your season one MMR is used as the seed for season two. And for season three, your season two MMR will be the seed for that. So that's why people who were ranked highly in season one ranked highly in season two, even if their placements weren't as good as someone who ranked lower in season one. So to briefly summarize your initial seed that uh, all of your placement matches are based off of is based off of the previous season. So for season two, it's season one, for season three, it's season two, or for a quick play if you're a new player with no prior competitive seasons to go off of. Personal performance is factored in for your placement matches. That means that when you're playing your placement matches, maybe you want to make more of an effort to get big numbers on your stat page because that will put a positive modifier on your MMR gain and uh, even losses. Your skill rating moves slower than your MMR and slowly tries to catch up to it. It acts as a buffer. That It's meant so that if you lose a lot of matches in a row, it's not quite as crushing. It's slow, it shows a higher skill rating. But if you keep going 50-50 at that point, your skill rating will slowly move towards your MMR. And vice versa, if you've got a big win streak, if you go 50-50, your, your skill rating will slowly rise to your MMR. Finally, MMR gains are based on your MMR versus the average MMR. So if you're playing in a match versus a lot of better players than you. So if your average uh, skill rating is like 3,000 and you're playing with a bunch of master tier players and 3,500, remember MMR is not equal to skill rating, but it's approximate. So chances are their, their MMR is a lot higher than yours. You will be getting more skill rating if you win and you'll be losing less skill rating if you lose. And vice versa, if you are a masters player playing in a platinum game for whatever reason, thank you Blizzard, you will lose more than you gain. And that's pretty much it. I think I pretty much went over the entire skill rating system. And of course, top 500 is for the top 500 MMR, not necessarily skill rating. So it's usually pretty even. It's usually pretty equal at that. At that point, they've played so many games that their skill rating is equal to their MMR. But uh, still, you can technically be a higher skill rating than someone and they're in top 500 and you aren't because their MMR is higher than yours, your hidden MMR, that is. So let me know in the comments if you want to hear any additional information. Like I said, I think I covered it all. So tomorrow I will be doing another user-submitted VOD. I know that everyone really looks forward to those, so look forward to that. I hope you enjoyed, maybe even learned something, maybe even had a little bit of fun. So good luck in solo queue, and have a great day. Peace out, guys.